that's a great question. And, and that raises to me sort of the, the very problem with what we have here, where we're now weaponizing the justice system to go after former presidents, right? I mean, you back up 2,000 years, and this is the kind of thing that they would do in the Roman Republic that led Ooh. to the end of the Roman Republic. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. But he actually is, I mean, Jesse, to your point, he is given special treatment. He is under a gag order that any other defendant, if they violated repeatedly on Twitter, online, would have already been thrown in jail. He is under court orders that any other defendant would have, and he is violating them every single day. Oh, that's gonna hurt! And, but the guy needs exercise. He's usually golfing. And so you're going to put a man who's almost 80 sitting in a room like this on his butt for all that time? It's not healthy. You know how big of a health nut I am. He needs sunlight. Well, if he's too old to handle sitting at a desk in court all day, I know of a job that he's definitely not qualified for. Aside from the whole 88 felonies. As we enter into yet another week of Trump's trial, we've witnessed next level pandering from those at Trump HQ, otherwise known as Fox News. That's a great question. And, and that raises to me sort of the, the very problem with what we have here, where we're now weaponizing the justice system to go after former presidents, right? I mean, you back up 2000 years, and this is the kind of thing that they would do in the Roman Republic that led Ooh. to the end of the Roman Republic, right? I mean, Caesar's out there in Gaul and says, if you don't, you know, come back to Rome, end your proconsul authority, and face prosecution, right? So what did he do? He crossed the Rubicon, and there, there was the end of the Republic. So, I mean, what we're seeing here has wow. shades in the past of history, and was what our Constitution tries to avoid. Unfortunately, we've now opened up a whole new era of politically tinged prosecutions of former presidents. From host Jesse Waters making the claim that he's too old to sit in a cold courtroom. It's not healthy. Yes, the same person who claimed that Biden couldn't stand up straight is now concerned about the mobility of his precious cult leader, I mean candidate, who continues to doze off in court, by the way. The president of the United States couldn't name anything he's gotten done or anything that he's going to do. Robert Hur witnessed this during his five-hour interview with President Biden, calling him a painfully slow elderly man with a poor memory who struggles to remember things. Biden couldn't even answer what he's done and what he's going to do on a late-night show. You see what happens without note cards? Donald Trump, been on the move his whole life. Golf, rallies, movement, action, sunlight, fresh air, freedom. This isn't lawfare, it's torture. They're making a 77-year-old man sit inside a dingy room for eight hours straight, four days a week. And if he moves or talks, jail. But in a rare switch up, Fox News guest host Marie Half offered a moment of clarity as her co-hosts tried to paint Trump as the victim. Shocking, right? He needs sunlight <laughs> and he needs activity. He needs to be walking around, he needs action. It's really cruel and unusual puni punishment to make a man do that. And anytime he moves, they threaten to throw him in prison. I think Democrats, a lot of us agree with that, that if you look at the 91 criminal indictments Donald Trump is facing, I would much rather the first case be about efforts to overturn an election, right? Or uh, the classified documents case, when he attempted to obstruct justice and destroy classified documents. A lot of Democrats will tell you this isn't the perfect one, but he actually is, I mean, Jesse, to your point, he is given special treatment. He is under a gag order that any other defendant, if they violated repeatedly on Twitter, online, would have already been thrown in jail. He is under court orders that any other defendant would have, and he is violating them every single day. And so, Kaylee, I agree with you that he is getting a lot of the press attention. The open question in my mind is whether that will be positive for him. When all of the attention is about paying off a porn star, right, is about all of the criminal indictments, him lying, him acting chaotic, I don't know at the end of the day if that press attention will help him when we know independent voters particularly don't like that chaos. They don't like the line. They don't like the moral shortcomings and failures of Donald Trump. I actually think that that press attention might hurt him and help Biden at the end. And this is a point that Midas contributor Dina Dash has hammered home time and time again. This man is far from the victim. I mean, he's offered the whitest of white collar treatment. He continues to disparage judges despite gag orders and intimidate jurors and smear anyone who dares wage a case against them. Trump always argues that he is receiving special treatment and being prosecuted against, but 
The fact is that he is given so much more latitude than a typical defendant. There is no way a criminal defendant would have been able to get the district attorney prosecuting his case on the stand to question the sharing of payments regarding personal private trips. It just wouldn't happen. Judge would have ruled based on the facts given to him in the affidavit because he had more than enough facts to decide whether a conflict occurred. How many regular non-billionaire folk would be offered such a luxury without then getting tossed in jail? To everything that happened today, and it was a lot, there's a comment from Trump just now where he was talking about the jury in an interview. This is what he had to say. That jury was picked so fast, 95% Democrats. Uh, the area is all, mostly all Democrats. You think of it as a just a purely Democrat area. It's a very unfair situation that I can tell you. One, what do you make of him commenting on the jury like that outside of court? And two, his legal team seemed to think that, that they did pretty well in, in figuring out the jury here. Yeah, uh, I think it is another violation of the gag order. You know, the, the judge put certain strictures on different pieces of the gag order, like it, you could only not talk about witnesses if it had to do with their participation in the case, even more strictures on when it was a violation if you talked about court personnel and so on. But the jurors, the judge basically said, you may not make public statements that relate to the jurors, period, like full stop. So I think any talking about the jurors is a violation of the gag order, which I think brings us to 12 violations for tomorrow's hearing. So we'll see what Judge Marshawn does about that. But not only that, Half went on to discuss how, at the very least, all of this chaos doesn't bode well for Trump regarding independent voters. Now, I know what you're thinking. In an ideal slash sane world, a former president paying hush money to an adult film star he allegedly had an affair with while his wife was at home with her child as a means to bury information voters should be aware of before an election would put off most American voters. But we don't live in an ideal world. We live in a world where where the man who attends church every Sunday with his wife is not considered the God-fearing candidate. But that's right, the man found liable of sexual assault who bragged about grabbing women by their genitalia, now flogging Bibles for a mere $60 a pop to help pay for his plethora of criminal trials is. Get your Bibles, get your Trump Bibles here. The good book is now a great book. It's like the Bible, but better. Bible's out of date. Would you guys like to get grifted? I'm selling Bibles. They're cautionary parables. There's so much to be learned from Donald Trump's life. This is a passage from the Trump Bible. And Donald Trump said unto his servants, I shall change the path of the hurricane with thy sharpie. Among the listeners was a humble tradesman named Billy Bush. And Donald Trump said unto Billy Bush, when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Grab them by the pussy. You can do anything. Hoping to sow doubt and division among the people and seize power for himself. Trump said unto the people, check his birth certificate. Donald Trump saw an opportunity to profit from the faith of his loyal followers. <laughs> he commissioned the printing of countless Bibles. As the ballots were counted and as the results announced, it became clear that Donald Trump had not secured enough votes. That's not a Bible story. No, it's, it is a Bible story. It is, it's in the Trump Bible. See, Trump Bible, and it's a story in it, so it's a Bible story. Saying we are not cultish, far too many are are you seeing in polling since the Republican primary ended and the focus has shifted into the courtroom? Yeah, I think there's this idea that the legal troubles that Trump is facing have somehow helped him, but that's not something that I've necessarily seen in the recent data. So this is Biden versus Trump margin nationally. Look, in January and February, you had a pretty clear Trump lead, right? Plus five, plus four, plus five, and you had the Maris poll that had Biden up by one, but within the margin of error, the Trump lead. Look at what's happened in April, though. All of these polls, all of them have shifted to be more friendly to Biden. Plus four, plus three, plus one, but it was plus four Trump back in January and February, and plus five to now plus two. So something is cooking, Kate. Okay? Something is cooking in the polls, and whatever is cooking seems to be helping Joe Biden. And one of the things that might be cooking is the fact that the attention has turned from the Republican primary now to Trump's legal problems because that's really been the main thing that's been in the news. Something is cooking. It sounds nefarious when it comes from Harry Anton. Is, Monson, there, yeah. is there any sign though that you're seeing of what we, it has been suggested, Donald Trump has said it, that this attention, his legal troubles are helping him. Yeah, so let's take a look here. This is the Biden versus Trump march by attention paid to Trump's legal cases. This is from a recent New York Times Siena College poll. If you're spending, if you're 
putting some attention, some or a lot of attention, if you're looking at the Trump trials, look at this. Biden leads among these voters by eight points. If you're paying little to no attention, Trump leads among these voters by 18 points. So the more people are focusing in on the Trump cases, they're actually more likely to vote for Joe Biden than for Donald Trump. The less attention that you're paying, the more likely you are to vote for Donald Trump. So the fact is, if you're paying more attention, you're more likely to vote for Joe Biden. Less attention, more likely to vote for Donald Trump. So I don't see the case that Trump is making here. And also, what about the, you know, if you're if you're paying attention to what Donald Trump is saying about the trial? He's called every case against him, all of the cases, a witch hunt. Are people buying into that? Not really. So take a look at this question from NBC News, right? Thinking about the upcoming trials, Trump's being held to the same legal standard as others or being unfairly targeted. The plurality, the clear plurality, 50% saying he's being held to the same standard as others versus just 43% who say he's being unfairly targeted. This basically looks like what you would look at 2020, right, where Biden beat Trump by about four and a half percentage points. This looks very similar to me. When you put it all together, it looks like the trials aren't helping Trump. They may, in fact, be 